Hello, my fire raid friends, the Inferno Man here with the midweek magic event deck. And today's event it looks like it's going to be Innistrad Constructed. So basically, this means you can put together a deck utilizing cards from Midnight Hunt, Crimson Mail, and Shadows over Innistrad Remastered. So this actually gives us a sweet little card pool for us to work with. But as always, we're going to try to put together something on a budget so you don't have to waste a bunch. Just get your wins in and get through the event as quickly as possible. And as you can see on screen, we're basically going to play a deck that I simply am going to call Innistrad Burn. If you've been around my channel long enough, you definitely know I'm a fan of aggro decks. And I love burn. So, of course, any excuse I have to make a burn deck is definitely something I'm going to take advantage of. Now, before we get started, I do want to remind everyone that for midweek magic or other special events in Arena, we're only going to stick to mini deck decks with gameplay sprinkled throughout the video as we reserve full in-depth coverage on a deck for actual constructed formats on Arena. So now that I gotta have that out of the way, let's actually go over the stats of this deck real quick. As you can see from the stats, we are basically a mono red deck, of course, with an average mana curve of about 1.7. We have 16 creatures in the deck, 8 instants, 14 sorceries, 3 planeswalker cards, and 19 lands. So our Innistrad burn deck, of course, is trying to do one of two things. We're either going to try to do a massive swing and do a one-hit KO with something like Festival Crasher, or we're going to try to do some pinging with our Kessic Flame Breather and Thermal Alchemist and a bunch of burn spells thrown at their face. But let's go a little bit more in-depth just to explain this a bit better. Vulture and Epic Cure is in the early game here, does a little bit of early damage, and creates a blood token which we can use to help filter through our deck in the mid to late game. As I just mentioned earlier, Thermal Alchemist will ping for damage and Keswick Flame Breather. Remember that again, in order to maximize Thermal Alchemist, you want to make sure you tap it before your spell resolves, so that way you can get the maximum amount of damage out of it. Keswick Flame Breather, however, doesn't do that. On the other hand, it does do a little bit of damage if you want to swing in, so you don't have to worry about tapping it to do any of its actual pinging. Also, Festival Crasher is one of our finishers in the deck. Festival Crasher will get a plus two, plus zero until end of turn whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell. And of course, you can see we have a lot of those spells to throw at our opponent. Real quick also, I do want to mention our actual Planeswalker, Chandra Dress to Kill. It's a great card in our deck, which allows, of course, to plus one to either ping our opponent and create some mana, or we can exile the top card of our library, and if it's red, we can cast it this turn. So this will help us turn through our deck in the mid to late game to get to victory. Now, as far as all the burn spells are concerned, we really just tried to scrounge up whatever we can find from the Innistrad set, and we actually have some decent ones. We have Fiery Temper, as you can see right here, which we want to try to cast for its madness cost, which will only cost it one, and basically becomes a lightning bolt we have incendiary flow i kind of forgot this card actually was a thing but of course since it is a burn spell we are going to take advantage of it and utilize it think of it basically as a very slow lightning strike we have ancestral anger which ideally we want to cast with a festival crasher out which gives our festival crasher trample and of course as it pumps itself up we can force through the damage to our opponent also the card draw in it is also just a sweet bonus on top your other small burn spells are End the Festivities, gets rid of small cheap tokens, and also again pings our opponent for one point of damage. Well, of course, we also have Play with Fire, our basic shock that just has a little bit of upside if we throw it at our opponent's face to scry for one. And finally, our last card is going to be Faithless Looting. This one mana draw two, then discard two is great, not only because it's solid filtering for our deck, but also the sweet thing is it's finally printed at common in Arena. So thankfully, if for those of you that haven't had a chance to make these yet, you can now craft them at common level, which means it's going to be great for us for future budget decks. That's otherwise basically the deck for you. There's not really much else to say except, aside from the 19 mountains, you're basically going to try to just curve out, get your early damage in with Voldren Epicure, start pinging your opponent with Thermal Alchemist or Kessie Flame Breather. My final thoughts are going to be that burn in general is both easy to learn but hard to master. So my tips I'm going to give you is to play one or two threats and ride them out as long as possible. Ideally, burn should also be going to face, but take out creatures that do more harm staying alive on the battlefield, such as a mana dork or a life gain creature. And having said that, if you do run into a pure life gain deck, you're going to have to take the L, because once life is gained, you're going to have a hard time fighting against that. Otherwise, if you are a fan, however, of red deck win style aggro decks, or if you just like burn in general, and you just want to get through this event as quick as possible, give this deck a try, and I assure you, you will not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!